My previous videos and playlist have illustrated exactly how we calculate the two most popular measures of single factor interest rate sensitivity, that is duration and DV01, also called price value, the basis point. Now, knowing how these calculations work, we'll apply them to understand some of the relationship dynamics that aren't necessarily intuitive. And that what I mean specifically is we'll look at what are the impact of one, yield, two, coupon, and three, maturity on duration and price value, the basis point. I'd like to start by illustrating the relationship between maturity and yield on the bond's duration using two of the bonds in Bruce Tuckman's chapter four as examples. So visually it's plotted right here. And on the y-axis we have duration, specifically it's Macaulay duration. So the units there are years, but the relationship here will be similar for modified duration. So we can say duration on the y-axis is plotted against, on the x-axis here, the bond's years to maturity. As we move to the right, that's the bond with longer years to maturity. And we have two bonds here plotted. The dashed line here, the lower line, is the high yield bond. And you can see here on the legend, this bond has a yield of 12%. And to keep it simple, we're setting the coupon rate equal to the high yield of 12%. As you know, if the coupon rate equals the yield, then the bond price is exactly to par. So the bond is priced exactly at par or $100 on every point in this line. But here, this dashed line is the high yield bond. And then the higher or steeper solid green line is the low yield bond. Its yield is 3.5%, but also coupon rate, rate set equal to yield so that it's always priced to par. And then we could imagine what I didn't plot here, but I might try to draw. We could imagine the Macaulay duration of a zero coupon bond because we don't need to do the calculation on that. For a zero coupon bond, the Macaulay duration is always equal to its maturity. So for example, at 20 years, if we had a 20 year zero coupon bond, its Macaulay duration would be 20 years. And so that we could also imagine a 45 degree line here that I didn't draw too well, that would represent the line for a zero coupon bond, 45 degrees, where each Macaulay duration equals the bond maturity, very simple. And then you could visualize sort of shifting here as we were to increase the coupon and yield or go to a higher yield. We're shifting down to the low yield bond at 3.5%. And then we increase the yield even more. We're falling down here to the bond with a 12% yield. So that if I remove that, we see that this illustrates the two relationships as, it, as on, on duration, that is with respect to both maturity and yield. Probably the more intuitive one, the easier one to follow or just understand is that duration is increasing with maturity for these par bonds, right? As we move to the right, the duration is increasing. And after all, Macaulay duration is the bond's weighted average maturity. So the Macaulay duration ought to increase with maturity. Of course, Time marches in the other direction from right to left so that if we start with a 30-year bond and we just let it mature naturally as time marches on, its maturity is decreasing and so its duration is decreasing also. So that in general we would say as the bond matures, its duration is decreasing. However, the less intuitive relationship relates to what I bolded here in blue, which is between yield and duration. And you can see higher yield implies lower duration. And visually, we could just take a slice at 30 years, for example, just take the view, a vertical slice at 30 years. We start here at the low yield bond of 3.5%. And as we just imagine, going to the higher yield, we're dropping. As we increase the yield, the, we are getting a lower duration. That's the relationship. Which, to explain the intuition, what I've got over here is I'm actually computing the Macaulay duration at a very short uh, maturity. 
just to keep the example simple, I'm really only over here at to about two years. So right about here, I'm actually computing the answer for Macaulay duration on the y-axis, which is for the, uh, I'll start at the low yield bond, 3.5% uh, yield, that Macaulay duration is 1.923 years. It's almost the bond's maturity. As expected, right, if that if we had a zero coupon bond, we would be right at two years. But now that we've raised the coupon and yield to 3.5%, we're dropping a little bit below two years for the Macaulay duration, which is the weighted average maturity of the bond. But now, as to the intuition, what happens when we increase this yield? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to change, I'm going to shift from the green line to the higher yield bond, that's the dashed line, I'm increasing the yield. What happens to the bond's duration, the Macaulay duration in this case? It is going to drop. Why is it going to drop? Well, this duration is the weighted average maturity of the bond. It's the sum of the numbers in this column here. And each of these is simply the maturity multiplied by the weight. That's why we say this Macaulay duration is the weighted average maturity of the bond because we're taking the maturities, where each maturity where there is a cash flow, and multiplying it by a weight. And the only tricky part is what's the weight? Well, the weight is the each present value's cash flow as a percent of the bond's price. So here we have, here's that final cash flow this two-year bond only has four cash flow, coupon, 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 and then final coupon in principle. It is discounted to present value at that yield. So here's the present value of that final cash flow. And the weight is that present value cash flow as a percentage of the bond's price. And keeping the example simple, I've got the price at 100, so you can see the weight is 94.93%. So the key to the intuition around what happens to duration when we raise the yield is what happens to this weight. We're going to raise the yield, which is a discount rate, and that's going to affect the present value of all the cash flows. Obviously, we increase the discount rate. All of the present values are going to come down, but it's going to have the most effect, the most dramatic effect on the final cash flow. And in fact, so this weight is going to come down and this weight is going to go up. That's very interesting. And now I'll read, before I shift it, I'll read exactly what Tuckman says about this intuition so you can see the numbers. And this is what he says. The intuition behind this fact of of uh, and but this fact refers again to the impact of increasing the yield on the bond's duration. The intuition behind this fact is that increasing yield lowers the present value of all payments. Well, that's all four of these, but lowers the present value of the longer payments the most. Right? So that's what we'll do. I'll now change this to 12%. And you can see if you focus here on the weights. You can see all these came down, but the weight of the final cash flow dropped the most. And actually the weight, the relative weight of the first cash flow, the nearest one actually increased. So that Macaulay duration as the weighted average maturity of the bond actually shortened. And there is a sense in which the bond is shorter because we've increased the yield. That's the intuition behind higher yield being associated with lower duration. My second of four sheets has a similar relationship here. Higher yield also uh, impacts a lower dollar value of zero one, or I prefer to call this a price value of the basis point. So you can see the only difference here is that the y-axis shows the price value of the basis point. But similarly, we see that for these par bonds, in regard to maturity, as we extend the maturity for both of these bonds, even the high yield bond, the DV01 is increasing. And then also, if we take a vertical slice, starting at the low yield, as we increase the yield, the price value of the basis point is decreasing. Okay, that one's a, so that one uh, follows from our first example. 
Then, now just looking at my third and fourth worksheets, I look at the last relationship. And the last relationship, I've replicated Tuckman's uh, exhibit here. This concerns the relationship here between the coupon rate and specifically the coupon rate and the duration in the DV01, where we're going to uh, find something we might not expect. But the difference here with this graph is we're plotting four bonds, and the yield to maturity for all of these bonds is 3.5%. So unlike before, we're not insisting that the coupon equals the yield except for the par price bond here in green. So that means what we have here in red is a 45 degree line. Yield to maturity is 3.5%, but the coupon rate is zero. So we're getting here a 45 degree line of Macaulay duration versus the maturity. And then keeping the yield constant as we move down, we would get here to a discounted bond where the coupon rate is one half the yield or the coupon rate is uh, one half of 3.5%. And then the solid green line is a par bond where coupon equals the yield. And then we get down to a premium price bond. That's dash blue where the coupon rate is twice the yield. What I don't have here, uh, which Tuckman's talk talks about, is if we imagined a perpetuity bond, that's a bond with no maturity, it has a very convenient Macaulay duration. It's one over yield. So in this example, if we had a perpetuity, the um, Macaulay duration of the perpetuity would be 1 divided by 3.5% uh, or 1 divided by 0 0.035, which would be about uh, 20, looks like about 28.6 years. And then on his graph, Tuckman uh, actually has a small, uh, a very... Uh, a uh, uh, hard to see line, almost hard to see line there at 28.6%, 28 per six years, horizontal line, because the that's the asymptote to these coupon bearing bonds. So we can see this discounted bond, that's the dotted purple. It has the lowest coupon here that's not zero. It's starting to bend towards its asymptote, which is the 28.6 years, the Macaulay duration of a Per bond, perpetuity bond that has no maturity. But the key relationship here, this is illustrating, is about the relationship between coupon rate and duration. And you can see that it's just like shorter maturity. Higher coupon rate is associated with lower duration. If we go back and let me just, I'll go out to 40. 40 years, zero coupon, Macaulay duration is 40. If we keep the yield constant and we decrease the coupon, I'm sorry, if we increase the coupon rate from zero, I have to go up. I go to discount. I increase the coupon rate. I'm getting a lower duration. Uh, that gets me to discount. If I increase the coupon, um, so, so going from the red to the dotted purple would be going to a, looks like a 1.75% uh, bond. And as I go from dotted purple to solid green, I'm going to a bond that has a 3.5% coupon to equal the yield, but my duration is going down. And then as I increase the coupon again to 7% relative to a 3.5% yield, so the coupon rate is twice the yield, I'm dropping here vertically again. Increase the coupon rate is associated with a lower duration. That's the first relationship. Then the second really and the last relationship is the one that we might not expect. And that is the relationship here for a given a fixed, we're not going to change the yield to maturity, but this is the relationship on the DV01. We might expect it to follow like it did before when we were only looking at par bonds. We might expect it to follow the dynamics of duration, but it's not. Here we see a difference and to understand this, and the graph you can see is very different here. My zero coupon bond is at the bottom. Notice directionally, these are actually pretty much flipped. How is this possible? Well, we have to go back to the definition of the price value of the basis point, DV01. It's a ratio on the numerator is dollar duration. Dollar duration is price multiplied by duration. And this here I'm doing a little bit of sleight of hand because if and uh, 
congratulations if you're following in mind this, but I'm now uh, in this formula. This needs to be a modified duration, not a Macaulay duration, but it doesn't matter for what we're talking about. DV01 is dollar duration in the numerator divided by 10,000. It's just a rescaled dollar duration. 10,000 in the denominator because there are 10,000 basis points in 100%. 100% is one unit. And so here's the key. The key is in the fact that the DV01 here has both a price effect and a duration effect here in the numerator. So that if we take first the relationship between coupon and DV01, and so that would be taking a vertical slice here, let's say at 30 years, and we start here at the zero coupon, and you can see as we increase the coupon, the DV01 is increasing. And that's because while we increase the coupon, while the duration is decreasing, it is overwhelmed by the effect, the impact on the bond's price. To increase the bond's coupon while holding the yield constant is to almost directly increase its price. So an increase of the bond's coupon mostly affects the bond's price and therefore increases the bond's DV01. So that's the first relationship. Higher coupon implies higher price value, the basis point. Now, then what about the relationship between maturity and price value, the uh, zero, uh, price value basis point? Well, this is, the, this is the far less intuitive one because recall in, with respect to duration, it's very straightforward. Longer maturity uh, is associated with longer duration. But when we go to the DV01, we have to consider that this DV01 relationship is price times duration divided by 10,000, which is a wash anyway. And now as we go longer maturity, so as we move now horizontally left to right, we go longer maturity. For the premium price bond, its price value base point zero DV01 is increasing. But look at the zero at actually some point in here, it starts to bend back and, dec and decrease. And that's because we have here offsetting price effect, that refers to this, and the duration effect. Specifically, as we increase, if we consider a zero coupon bond, as we increase the maturity of a zero coupon bond, its price is decreasing. As we increase the maturity, on the other hand, its duration is increasing. So for the zero coupon bond, these are going in opposite direction. And for that reason, the impact of longer maturity is unclear on the dollar value zero one for a zero coupon bond or for that matter, bonds with that are uh, with low coupon rates or discounted bonds precisely because while the duration will be increasing with maturity, the price will actually be decreasing with maturity so that we have a price effect that's going in the other direction of a duration effect for low coupon bonds and definitely zero coupon bonds, rendering the impact on DV01 to be unclear. So that's the final relationship that's of interest and the, probably the least intuitive, but I hope that's helpful and if the video was helpful, then subscribe to the channel and you know what you know what I'll say next. You'll get notified of the next video. Thank you.